So the search for the best Italian desserts, my friend, is over because now we have Brooklyn cannoli here with some things, some incredible things like cannolis, tiramisu. We have Tony to talk about the company for a second, but you're basically getting an old world flavor of Italy right here in America. Tony, please tell us a little bit about a background about Brooklyn cannoli and what makes it so special. Thank you, Joe, for the kind words. Uh, Brooklyn cannoli uh, started uh, back uh, humble beginnings in 1995. It started by uh, Al Aiello and his brother James Aiello. And uh, the company uh, started out by making tiramisu, which is this item right here. And that was our first item that they made. And they did a great, great job and they distributed all through the borough area in New York. And it grew and grew and uh, the popularity uh, was very well received, uh, the items. And from that point, uh, the business developed, they got requests for more additional items, uh, very traditional Italian items. This tiramisu item was made in a very, uh, in a Naples, traditional Naples style. And, and what that means is, and we add a little bit of American flair because in Italy, as you know, it's, they like everything very, you know, not as sweet. Americans like things a little bit sweeter. So we sweeten up just the hair to make it uh, a, an Italian American item. And by, by what we've done to make it in the traditional fashion, we use a real mascarpone cheese. Uh, and the cheese we got from, uh, from our family, uh, the ILO family, which is the creator of the items and the recipe. Uh, their family has been in the cheese business for 112 years. So we've used, wow. we've used the mascarpone cheese among some other things, which I'll mention later in the presentation, uh, which is a nice base to have for your, for your tiramisu. We import uh, Saviardi ladyfingers from Italy. We don't use the, the domestic uh, or Canadian uh, lady fingers or cookies as you as they call it. Uh, so we, we take we spare no expense in bringing in the, the best uh, ingredients to make the best uh, finished product. And then um, we take the uh, muscapone and there's two types of processes. You, you can mix it and blend it with a 30% butterfat cream, or you can do it with a 40% butterfat cream. We take it to the next notch. We use a 40% butterfat cream mixed in with the muscapone that gives it the perfect balance so you don't have to use any chemicals in the product to bring it to a finished, uh, a perfect finish uh, texture and, and flavor. And then uh, when it's all said and done, we layer the cookies, all the parfaits set up, and then we dust it off with, a, with an imported cocoa. And, um, and that's pretty much the item. And it's, a, right, it's scored 15, so a caterer or a restaurant can cut that and as small as they want, or the traditional size here will be a 15 cut, so it's a five by three. You get 15 portions out of this tray right here. And there are two trays to a case? Two trays to a case, and, um, and again, at a very good cost, so. Excellent. And then from this item, it's very similar. We were asked to do another item, which is very similar, but instead of having a, a uh, and I forgot to mention, this item here, the Saviardi Ladyfingers, are, are soaked in an espresso coffee. Wow. That's what really makes it, it finishes off and makes it a perfect dessert. This item is very similar to the tiramisu, but instead of using a, a, a coffee, a, a espresso coffee, we use an amaretta. And it can't be a real amaretta because we're not allowed to sell a real amaretta right. in the United States, but that's what makes it a little bit different from the, from the imported amaretta uh, or toasted almond uh, dessert. Same type of thing, we use a Saviardi Ladyfinger, we use the same uh, butterfat, 40% butterfat mixed in with the mascarpone. It's layered with the cookies and then it's topped off. And this is a real nice touch. It used to be, a, we had some toasted almonds. We still have that, but then they added in about five years ago to really make it uh, exceptional. They added uh, imported amaretta cookies. And we you take, and we buy the cookies and, and we, we don't buy them crumbled. We buy them and crumble them ourselves. So they're really excellent cookies. And that's what really tops off the dessert. You know, I'm really impressed with the hand process with this whole company. Everything seems to be by hand, overseen, you know, really watched. And even from the from the cannolis, which I'm sure we'll get to in a minute, but just this whole process here and the videos that I've seen, it's very hands-on. It's very quality control. The owners at the plant looking around, checking everything. And I think as someone who's going to serve a consistent product in a restaurant and move your foot forward to a consistent product, this product definitely is, is one of the far the best I've seen in the industry. Uh, Brooklyn Cannoli has really taken a, a step to be con not only consistent, but bringing those old flavors, like you said, from Italy, combining them with America flavors, and just taking it to a whole nother level at an incredible affordable price. Yes, thank you, yep. So from tiramisu's to cannoli, 
Brooklyn Cannoli has got you covered with an unbelievable, not only crisp shell, flavorful, but hand rolled. And in fact, one by one, each one is by rolled one. Each by, by one. hand. By hand. Incredible process here. So can you talk to me a little bit about what um, consumers out there would, would get? In other words, we have these wonderfully packed, safe packed cannolis, and I have to bring up something too. That this shell can really absorb uh, a drop. I've seen one off camera, mm -hmm. actually fell on the table and, and held its shape. Gives you an idea of the quality that's behind this. But what can we expect from the traditional large cannoli shell there, chocolate and mini? Okay. Um, cannolis was our second item that we made uh, from Brooklyn Cannoli. Start out with the tiramisu. We made that in Naples style fashion. And then in a Sicilian fashion, we started, and obviously everybody knows that's the cannolis from Sicily. We, we made that as close as we could to the Sicilian cannoli, but we felt we had to make it a, a, with a little bit of an American flair again, just because uh, our, our taste profiles are different here. But it's not as sweet. Uh, it's all hand rolled. Uh, the product has, uh, the shell itself has cinnamon. You take this product here and you can see it in the coloring. It has cinnamon, vanilla, and cocoa cinnamon, vanilla, cocoa, and, and sugar, uh, cane sugar in the dough. And they are all hand rolled as Joe uh, pointed out, which is the difference is you get very little breakage and it's more consistent, uh, consistent on the circumference of the shell because it's hand rolled. If it's machine rolled, it tops, it, it thins the top of the shell and in, trans, uh, in transportation from our distributors, sometimes you get breakage. This product here is very, very sturdy. We very rarely have any breakage issues, and it's a nice, consistent, hard shell to house our fantastic cannoli cream. And if you taste it, the shell in and of itself, you can eat it, and it's very tasty. Most shells that are made by our competitors do not have the flavor profile, and are basically just there to house the cream. Our shell, you can actually eat it, taste it. Joe pointed out a very good point. It's very flaky. What you want in a cannoli shell, most people, some people like it a little different, but most people like a very dry shell that has a little bit of flake to it because what that does is you can fill the shell, and I'll show you. And this is our cannoli cream, which I'll talk about in a minute. You can fill the shell and it takes a second. Everybody gets nervous about filling a cannoli. It takes literally a second. So one side here, one side here, and you're done. And if you notice, this shell here can stay, be filled in the morning by a restaurant, caterer, if they, if they choose to do so because of uh, their workload. They can put them in a tray, wrap them, and it can be ready to go in an evening party. And it'll be as crisp as the, as the, the minute you fill them, which is unlike anybody else's uh, cannoli shell and cream because it has very less, there's a lot less water in our batter and uh, therefore our yields are better and our flavor profile and our texture is better. In regard to the cream, again, I mentioned this earlier, the cream, uh, the cheese that we use is an empastata regatta. Again, the cheese we get provided by the Aiello family that's been in around for 112 years. Uh, so we start out with a fantastic, great empastata regatta. Empastata is just as a drier regatta. And what that does is it gives you a better yield, a better texture, and also will not separate. You can hold this product. I have, I have cut this product. And as you can see, it's thawed out. And you can leave this sit there for an hour and will not separate and will not drip any water out of this product. That's when you know you have a really good high quality cannoli cream. We add um, vanilla to the to the cream so that so it's it's that it's cane sugar. Uh, we don't use confectionery sugar because it's overly sweet. So we have a cane sugar, a little bit of vanilla and spice, and it's uh, it's whipped to perfection. And then we add, if you can see that, Joe, we have chocolate chips. We make it with or without the chips. Most people prefer the chips. Gives a little bit of extra pizzazz. And I have to say, there's more chips in there than than uh, a lot of chips. You want to see. So a lot of times in the traditional cannolis, maybe you'll find a, a bite here, a bite yeah, there. A lot of this chips. Is jam -packed. Americans like chocolate chips, so we put it in there. This is a one and a half pound bag. There's four uh, bags to a case, and usually one case will fill a case of large 48 count cannoli shells, which you see here, or it'll fill a uh, case, and I'll show you, I have the case here somewhere, but it will fill a case of the uh, 120 count uh, mini shell. So, and we always say, hey, order a couple extra ones because some people are a little heavier with the, with the fills, but it usually works out very, very well. And these, this has become an extremely popular item for us, probably, uh, probably our second largest selling item beside the tiramisu. And uh, 
And it's been, it's been a great uh, growth throughout the years, and uh, now we're one of the premier uh, cannoli companies in the country. Well, you've raised a good point before, because even as a chef in the catering facility, and when you're putting out 100 or 200 of these things, you, you just can't do them a la minute. It's good to have the peace of mind knowing that you can do them several hours before, yep. and they still hold their crispiness, their flavor, etc. And that really only comes from a good quality product. Yep. Uh, you can walk the bakeries in, in some of the most famous Italian towns and smell that aroma of a freshly fried cannoli shell, and it brings you back here with just one whip. And, it's, mm -hmm. and it tells you the history of the product and the quality of ingredients that goes into this product. So if you're thinking you want to taste these incredible products, but what about making a smaller portion to go for retail? Well, they have you covered here with these grab-and-go containers, starting with this tiramisu, which I should mention is the same exact product, ingredients, and recipe that's going into this little size container. Okay, Joe. Um, as Joe mentioned, it's single size uh, to go. Uh, because of the success of our tiramisu tray, we wanted to find uh, another way to market our market this great item, which was our first item when we got started. So we start, we came up with this cup. Um, it's a four ounce cup, just enough to satisfy your sweet tooth, um, cost effective, and we made it to, uh, and now that comes with a, originally we had it without the label, now with the new laws and everything, we make it with a repack label that are in the box and has UPC code, ingredients, everything you need, nutritionals on that, on that cup. Uh, as far as the item itself, this item here will transfer, okay, if you're eating it, if you, for, for a restaurant, pizzeria, uh, cafeteria style uh, to go, uh, bodegas, whatever, whatever the case may be, it's very convenient to eat. You pull that down here and you eat it. And, and the item, most people are concerned about the plastic. The ILO family upgraded the plastics years ago because of the, uh, the, the freezer and it would make the, the plastic brittle. They want with a really expensive plastic. So you can, you can, you can't, it's indestructible. So you can, it won't crack. So people want that because the one thing that, the only thing that can hurt this is if air gets into it. So we keep it very secured, but that's a very popular item. And then because of that popularity, uh, we grew into and we made this item here, as I mentioned, which is the toasted almond or amaretta cream. And then we did the same exact item uh, with the cup as well. And the items are made, as Joe mentioned, exactly the way the original item was made. We don't use a sponge cake like all our competitors do. We use actually Saviardi Ladyfingers. They're layered. You can see them in here. Yeah. They're layered in here with the butterfat, well. with the 40% butterfat cream and the, and the mascarpone, and it's dusted off with the cocoa. The only difference is, is the size and the shape. That's it. And then the same thing with our cake, which we'll get into in a later segment. We do a tiramisu cake exactly the same way as these items are made. Now, how typically, how are these packaged? If, if we they come 12, great question. They come 12 uh, four ounce cups to a case. And they come, uh, we have three items. We have the tiramisu, we have the amaretta cream or toasted almond, and then we made a mousse cup. And this item is, again, like we did the Naples style tiramisu and we did the Sicilian shell, we make this in a French, traditional French uh, style. So it's made just like the French would make it. It's a scratch from scratch mousse. And uh, it's topped off with a uh, with the cream and, uh, and chocolate chips. So, or shavings I should say. And again, it also has the label as well. So this is a great item, very cost effective. Uh, and it, it's uh, mousse made from scratch, which is very light and airy and very tasty. Well, if you're looking to put this dessert company on your favorites list, log on to brooklyncannoli.com. Okay, so uh, Tony, tell us how we could stuff these cannoli shells. Okay, Joe, it's very easy. Take your cannoli shell. This is the, our mini shell. You take your cannoli cream, and everybody has a different way of holding it. You can, you can slide this down. You can put a clip. You can move this like here. You can twist it just like you would a regular pastry bag. And you get it, and you just put it in, and it slides up, and you put it in, and it comes right out. No fuss, no mess. Very simple. Very One simple. second. And then we could do the same thing with the large shell. And we have, you could take a large shell again, all hand rolled shell. You start in the middle and you pull out. And you start out in the middle and you pull out. A 
good quality chocolate combined with the flavor of the cannoli, well, let's face it, Brooklyn Cannoli has got you covered with that. Their chocolate cannoli is far greater than any other product on the market. Please, Tony, tell us a little bit about that process. Our cannoli shells and cream uh, has been so successful that we needed to branch out and add a few items to the, to the product line. So what we did was we took our cannoli shell, we both do it both in a large and small, and we dipped it in, double dipped it in a Belgian chocolate. And if you notice, it's not just on the outside or on the tips, it's all the way through, if you can see that. And again, you fill it just the way you would, your traditional cannoli, and it's a, it makes a nice, has a, it makes a nice finished product with a great flavor, flavor profile. And you can see that. And then in addition to the chocolate shell, um, we added another line just recently, which is our cannoli chips. And the cannoli chips, we call them the, the dippers. You can put cannoli cream on the chip and serve it, or you can put it in a bowl and then have these out. People can just dip it just like they would a, a, a tortilla party shell. Dip. Yeah, a party dip. <laughs> and it works out really, really well. And again, the item is made exactly like our traditional shells. It's cinnamon, cocoa, vanilla, sugar in the dough, and then we press them out into squares for dipping. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, don't go anywhere yet. Coming up, some artfully presented cakes. You won't believe your eyes. Well, it's all about sweets and tantalizing treats. And here in front of me, we have a mixture of some incredible traditional Italian cakes and America's favorites. So Tony, I don't know about you, but I mean, they all look fantastic. But I, I know for a fact that it's very difficult to find a good Italian cheesecake unless you're in a good Italian restaurant. This cheesecake far supersedes any kind of cheesecake I've had in the past. Just unbelievable, but it doesn't stop here. So we have sort of the European classics on this side. Uh, and then again, the favorites. Uh, you could just go one by one like this, but the quality, the velvetness of the cakes are just really, really unbelievable. Where do we start with something like this? I mean, portion controlled, beautifully decorated. I mean, who needs a pastry chef? Well, <laughs> great, great, uh, great comments, Joe. Just like uh, Joe mentioned, we have a, some European style cakes in a tr Italian tradition, because we're an Italian dessert company. So we started um, making our Italian desserts and Italian cakes, and then we transitioned to, to, to some of the more American style cakes, just to uh, balance out the, the product line. We actually started, our first cake was our New York cheesecake, which is obviously, that's the number one dessert item in the United States, is New York cheesecake. Followed by tiramisu, which most people don't know that, but uh, tiramisu as, a, as an item is, uh, is number two. But the New York cheesecake, if you can notice, and this is here displayed, it is 100% pure cream cheese with our flavorings. And if you notice, it only has a light dusting if you hear and here you can notice of graham cracker. Wow. Most of our competitors, you, know, you can try that. Dive into this one. We have 64 ounces of cheesecake. The yield is phenomenal, the taste profile, the texture, and the finish is fantastic. Most of our competitors use at least a quarter inch of graham cracker crust. And that will take away from your overall experience of eating a real traditional New York cheesecake. That is a serious New York cheesecake. This is New York. And as Joe mentioned, we transitioned over uh, after this was our first cake item, we did our Italian regatta cheesecake. Again, the Hale family with the cheese. Uh, we have the, we start out with the best ingredients with our with our family uh, cheese recipe, and we use that and we bl we blend that with um, with some of our spices. It has a lemon zest to it. It's a very uh, it's a very even though it looks dense, it's a very light, refreshing uh, change of pace over the traditional richer New York cheesecake, and that's become very very popular. In, uh, in recent years, it's grown beyond the Italian restaurants. Everybody's bringing uh, a regatta cheesecake on uh, to their menu. It's growing. Really fantastic. And if you look at the Italian uh, cheesecake here, you know what I like about this, by um, the way, too? It's so easy. It's easy. To pull out. Look at that. This one's very firm. This one's very easy to handle. You can't mess this up. You know, you want to train somebody to cut cheesecake, which is like a daunting task. Look at this. And again, as Joe's holding that there, you could see the firmness of it. This is great. The portion control is just amazing with this, uh, and, and it really makes it easy for anyone just to, to kind of grab your portion. And you know, it'll also save consumers a lot of money, you know, not messing up and making sure that they're 
cutting the same exact portion. They don't have to worry about that. The last thing uh, restaurants or even caterers want to do is, is handle the product any more than they have to because that's when you get damaged. Uh, and it's this stuff is all 10 inch cakes, uh, 14 slice, so you get exact portions, and and uh, it's very very uh, efficient to to handle. Um, we also, in addition to our Italian, since we're on the Italian line, we also have our tiramisu cake, again made in the traditional Naples style, same as our trays, same as our cups, and you can see it: Saviotti lady fingers, mascarpone cheese, same thing. Um, quality is there, especially with the toppings on top and the decorated. And I, I like the consistency. You know, being in the food service industry, you want to know that you're going to get the same piece of cake, tasting the same exact each time. And restaurateurs, that's where some, some of them shy away from, right? They if, do. If that particular pastry chef leaves or they don't come back. Or it's too cumbersome. They don't want to handle it. And desserts are, are really a big key item added to the, to the, uh, the, to the restaurant slip. The restaurants make more, they make more margin, they don't have to handle it. Uh, the waitresses, waiters make more because it increases the bill, so that increases their tip. And uh, it's something that, it's the last thing, it's very, very important because like coffee, it's one of the last things that the patron tastes before they leave the restaurant. So they can have a great meal and have a bad dessert or bad coffee and it ruins the whole experience. So desserts are very, very important and it's for the growth of the industry. Uh, why we're still in the Italian, one last thing has become very, very popular is our, it's one of our later additions is our limoncello cake. Wow. That's fantastic and that is great for all restaurants. If, even if you don't like dessert, you'll like this item because it's very light. You don't feel like you're eating anything or, or items, just like I should mention, are made in that European style fashion, which are less sweet. The American style dessert companies that we compete with are overly sugared and very, very heavy and very large. This size is very comfortable to eat. You can eat it, you don't have to share it, and you can feel satisfied. The limoncello cake is even better. It's very light. Um, we basically use a, a nice combination of a, of a lemon-infused sponge cake, also with a lemon um, mascarpone whipped with our cream, and then it's topped off with a European shaved uh, vanilla uh, shaving. Uh, I mean, white chocolate shaving. White chocolate. And, it, and if you can see that item, when you eat it, it's very light and fluffy, and you can eat the whole thing without sharing. That's now important. Typically, what's the portion size uh, that we're going to get for the typical cake here? Portion size, um, like I said, that's a, that's a 14, called a 14 cut cake. So some of your larger ones are a 12 cut. Uh, some of the caterers do a 16 cut. But this is a, a, is a middle of the road cut. It's more than enough to satisfy your sweet tooth. Absolutely. So we have some of our European classics with, of course, the most popular, the New York Cheesecake, but diving over to this chocolate mousse is my favorite, and I want to tell you something, folks, they do it right. Tony, from the Mississippi mud to some of these American favorites here, talk to me. I mean, I mean, are we leaving here today, or are we here to roll me out? These items are, are, are very, very traditional, but uh, have been a great complement to our line. We have the traditional, very traditional carrot cake. And believe it or not, this is an old-fashioned style cake. Uh, it's something that your grandparents used to eat, your parents, but believe it or not, it's still very popular today because it's actually very tasty. And we have a, we're, this is an award-winning cake for us. Wow. We, won, uh, we won a lot of awards with this cake. It combines the perfect combination of fresh carrots, pineapple, walnuts. It's cooked, baked uh, to perfection, and then it's topped off with a, a cream cheese icing. And if you could see that, and again, very firm, very easy to handle. Some of the mousses are a little soft. This is a very easy cake to handle because it's very firm. Pulls up. Perfect. I mean, look how that pulls up. This is perfectly portioned here. I mean, look at the, the real carrots in here that you can see. Carrots, pineapple, walnuts, all good things for you. And very, just enough sweetness to, uh, to have an enjoyable well, I'll, dessert. I'll fill you in. <laughs> oh my God, moist. It's a great item, great item. Wow. That is seriously delicious. You, you got that? That's, the, that's a gr very great item for us. And then we also have an apple cake, which again is, oh. this, is a, this is again a, a little twist on a traditional apple, apple pie, apple cake. This is something very, very popular. Uh, one of our best selling items. Um, it has, it blends three types of apples. It's like a soft apple, hard apple, a meal apple. And it has, it's topped off with a, a cinnamon streusel. Fantastic. Again, very firm, very easy to handle, very easy to handle. Super easy. Wow, just the incredible uh, quality of ingredients every time. I love the portion size. Portion size is great. 
Now, what do we got going on with, with the Mississippi Mud? Now, one of the most popular iconic cakes out there, uh, and, and Brooklyn Cannoli does it right. I mean, you could see, look at, they're, they're not sh skipping on any quality. No. Look at all the marshmallows on top, the quality chocolate. We needed to add some chocolate items, because obviously chocolate's very, very Im important in the dessert world, especially with the ladies. And we wanted to do a little something different than a traditional chocolate layer cake, uh, which everybody pretty much does, and they're excessively big, and they're pretty much tasteless. This item here is basically, it's a brownie cake. Um, we use a, again, uh, like our other items, we use a from scratch mousse, very light, very fluffy. We then, uh, that's uh, put on some very dense uh, chocolate base, almost like a fudge base. And then it's topped with brownie bites. And it's fantastic. And then uh, in addition to some of our other chocolate items, we make one item that's actually a flourless item. And at that item over here, it's a, it's a fantastic item. It'll be great for if if you gluten free and tolerant. Gluten free. We're not a gluten free factory, but if you want to pass off as a flourless, some people who who are sensitive but not highly allergic to gluten would like to choose that item. A lot of a lot of people want to diet. Exactly. A lot of people want to diet one gluten free. There's your dessert, and then you can put that in a microwave, and it has a, a it's a dense chocolate, like a brownie dense oh, chocolate with a liquid with a ganache finish, and a, it's actually an apricot uh, topping. An apricot glazed topping. You put it in the microwave. You serve that with some whipped cream or vanilla ice cream, and you got a fantastic dessert. Well, I am impressed, and uh, you know, really talking about the simplicity here, portion control, and the and the grand quality of all these cakes. Okay, so you know, talking about the delivery, the packaging of this product, which I thought was really unique because these cakes are so delicate and beautiful. You want to try to exactly. put them in a place where even if they did. Something fell on it, it wasn't going to affect it. Can you talk a little bit about the packaging? Sure. There's a package right here. Each one of our cakes, as I mentioned, are packed in a single box. And we then take this box, you can see this here. The item fits in here. It's got a it's it comes with a actually it comes with a paper ring around the box, around the cake. It's placed in a box and then the box is then sealed with a with a plastic seal. So this way it keeps uh, the product from getting freezer burnt, drying out, and it also helps in the transportation. You can probably stand on this box. Stand on. And the other nice thing about it is, most of our competitors pack in a two pack, four pack, or even a six pack, and sometimes they do mixed items. This is something that you can always encourage someone to buy at least one item from you, and the, and the, the sales reps love that, and it's from, from a sales point, they can sell the, the customer, and it's not a big ticket item. Everybody can afford one cake. And it's been a great, it's been a great uh, selling point for us. That's wonderful. Yeah, sales went up 35% since we've done that. Wow, that's yeah. very good. Yeah. So from their kitchen to yours, Brooklyn Cannoli has got you covered with these sensational treats. Could be grab and go items or food service packaging. There are your one stop shop to the sweet tooth favorites. Tony, thank you so much for having Thanks for having us, Joe. Thank you. Uh, anyone at home want some more information about these incredible products? Log on to brooklyncannoli.com.